Today on Let's Talk VoiceOver with BT and Randy Ryan, we get into the rest of our chat with Dave Fenoy. If you missed part one, listen to episode four to get caught up. If you heard part one, please continue when you hear the beep. Beep. In this episode, Dave shares his thoughts on teaching, training, understanding the character arc, and other things that Dave regularly teaches his students, and for good money, about how to work in video games. The difference between voiceovers for animation versus video game voiceovers. The value of work ethic and continuing to learn and polish your craft. Using workout groups to help you improve your skills. And a whole bunch of other stuff that you're just going to have to listen to to find out about. So settle in, my friends, and let's talk. Voiceover. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Dave, you do teaching and workshops, coaching, that sort of thing. Can you talk a little bit about what you do and how you got into it and uh, kind of the giving back nature of some of that? Um, I'll, I'll start with how I started teaching. Uh, people kept asking, oh, wow, you're doing voice. Man, I'd love to do it. How do you do it? And I would give it away. And then I decided, you know, that's not working. And, and actually, the, giving it away, I have found, I learned that uh, people value what they have to pay for. Might not be money, but most of the time money is that valuable thing that they're giving up. Absolutely. I had a very good friend and uh, another actor, and he wanted to do voiceover. And I said, oh, yeah, man, I'll tell you what. Come over Mondays at such and such a time, and I'll be happy to work with you for an hour every Monday. Uh, He came for two Mondays. After the third Monday, didn't show, didn't call. Fourth money didn't show, didn't call. So I've called him. What happened, man? He said, "Oh, you know, man, it's just, you know, it's twenty minutes to drive over there, and uh, you know, it's just." Too- <laughs> and, and I realized, oh my God, I've been throwing pearls before swine. Right. And what do you think twenty minutes of my time is worth? Yeah. Well, no, he was talking about the driving time. I would spend an hour with him. Oh my gosh. So it 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 was a lesson to me uh, because other people were very willing and happy to pay me. Uh, to to sit down with them and work with them on voiceover. Uh, so it really started from people asking me, hey, how do I get into voiceover? Could I spend some time with you? Okay, well, you can. It'll cost you this much. Well, over the years, uh, I got better at it and uh, at the teaching part and better understanding what people were missing, the mistakes they were making, the assumptions that they were making about what voiceover is that uh, I had to disabuse them of. And um, when I decided, okay, I'm really going to take this seriously. If I'm going to teach, let me find a niche uh, because there's plenty of people teaching TV promos and commercials for sure, Uh, definitely animation and narration. Um, I'm an award-winning voice actor in video games. I'll do that. So I created a curriculum and uh, went through, it's more than just uh, voice acting for video games. I talk about the industry a little bit and why this is an opportunity uh, to be a voice actor in video games or be an actor in video games, I should say. Sure. And then I talk about uh, the unique Uh, challenges that voice acting for video games presents and how we overcome them and how to create real characters. And and that has gone into how to create uh, demos that work, you know, because uh, there are people I know who've been in this business a long time, work all the time, and their demos suck. Well, their demos can suck because they're working all the time. If you're just getting started, your demo needs to be superlative. Uh, So... Uh, and how to figure out what the tone of a game is, how to, to bring a character to life, how to, you know, how, how to get into the backstory. Because 99% of the time with video games, you're talking, um, you, you got words on the page and that's it. Uh, there's no other actor in the room that you're bouncing energy off of. Uh, there's action happening that may or may not be indicated. Um how you're feeling may or may not be indicated. Uh, So especially, especially on your, 
your um, audition, you have to take those words off the page, I call it. Um, what's the pre-life of, of this character opening their mouth? What does this character really want overall? And, and, you know, in video games, sometimes you don't know what the overall arc of a character is. But you can know the overall arc of every scene. And if you can get that right, what's that character thinking? What's that character feeling? What's the character doing? Who's the character talking to and the, the nature of that relationship? You can work in this business. Uh, and then there, there are the technical things. People think what's important is that every word is is clearly spoken and understood. I tell people all the time, listen, as in video games, if you've got a choice between emotion and clarity of speech, I'll take emotion every time. Yeah. Uh, it's much more akin to stage and even more so to uh, film. So what do you see as the biggest difference between animation and video game acting in your from your perspective? Well, animation acting, I think, leans towards the comedy and video game acting leads towards drama. And uh, what I mean by that, you're going to find many more crazy, goofy voices and, and wacky characters in uh, cartoons. Not that you're going to miss uh, bizarre characters in video games, but their presentation tends to be less comedic and more um, cinematic. Okay. Uh, you, you might have a funny game. Uh, it might be, you know, that adventure buddy movie where the guys don't like each other, but they have to save the world together and figure out a way, and there's lots of laughs and uh, stuff going on. But it's much more cinematic than uh, crazy voices uh, and, and uh, bizarre-looking characters. Um you know, if you just go to Cartoon Network and, and look at the cartoons that are happening now and compare those with the video games that are happening now, video games are much more like movies than anything else. I'm going to give Dave a shameless plug here so that he doesn't have to do it himself, not that he would. <laughs> I have um, been fortunate enough to watch Dave in his workshops uh, on several occasions, and uh, the the clarity with which you communicate to people and the patience with that you take with individual students um, is just always been really instructive to me. Um, if if you ever had a third or fourth calling in life <clears throat> and you said, you know what, I think I'm going to teach, I can't imagine anybody that I would pick as a better person to do that because you just you really have a gift for being Aww. able to communicate to people. Well, thank you. You, you know. Uh <laughs> uh, thank you. You're making me blush here, which is hard for black people. Um, my mother uh, was a school teacher all her life. Thank goodness she's still with us. My mother wanted me to get a teaching certificate when I went off to college, and I was like, oh, you can forget that. No way. I got better things to do. I'm going to be a, a movie star, a musician, or this or that or the other. Ah, teaching. Ooh, forget about it. Uh, and... I have learned that uh, I actually really like teaching, um, and uh, I kind of have a philosophy that, A, it is not my job to tell people what they can or cannot do. Or I'll put it this way. No, tell them what they cannot do. I have been fooled too many times uh, when somebody with tremendous talent but not much of a work ethic or, or willingness to humble themselves to the information that they were taking in uh, so they didn't get it and they didn't improve. And somebody else who may not have had um, the, the God-given talent that that first person had, but they worked harder. They wanted it more. They took it in. They, they explored uh, themselves and surprised the hell out of me themselves and other people. I, had a, I, I teach in London a couple times a year. And I had a young lady, uh, when I go over, I do a presentation on a Friday, two-day workshop, and then I do private lessons on Monday. And uh, this young lady came in for a private lesson on Monday. And she was doing, a, she had a narration that she was doing. And she did the typical, you know, sing song, and I'm going to make these words mean something by the song in my voice. 
Um, you know, I've I've chosen. Okay, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to do this here. And I I kept stopping. No, 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 no. Just say it. Feel it and say it. Um, and for that whole hour, I mean, she was almost in tears uh, because I would not let her just continue on. Uh, by the end, she was beginning to get it. A year later, uh, she sent me her video game demo. It was wonderful. At the Voice Arts Awards, uh, she was nominated for uh, Best Video Game Demo. She didn't win, but, you know. But that, that's, still, that's still a big leap. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not the one who put her video uh, demo up. Other people had to judge it. People that didn't know her. And it was, you know, one of five demos being judged as best video game demo. Yeah, and I've always had the, a, a similar philosophy. I can remember even from being much younger, like 17, 16 years old, just kind of noting this. And and and, mm-hmm. it, and the self-talk has always gone something like this. The people who succeed the most in life are the people who've got enormous God-given talent and work their rears off. Well, of course they are. Of course those are the people that tend to yes. – the dirty little secret – is that the people who are right behind them are the ones that may not have as much talent, Mm -hmm. but are willing to do whatever they need to to work. And they will beat out the people who have even stupid talent who don't work at it. Yeah, yeah. Too true, too true, too true. I mean, there are exceptions to everything, but just as as groups, that's just how it kind of stratas out. Yeah. And, you know, I think also as you get older – uh, and if uh, any young people are listening to this, whatever talent you have, keep working on them. If you can sing now, never stop singing. Always sing and always be working right. on that. If you're a good actor, keep acting. Keep working on it. Keep improving. Uh, what, whatever that t- – painter, whatever. Whatever that talent is, um, keep doing it. Keep learning. Keep working at it. Uh, because if you stop, the old saying, uh, what you don't use, you lose, is very, very true. true. Yeah, it is. It's very true. Yep. So what's your take on workout groups for, for voiceover people, Dave? Oh, I think they're great. I think they're great. Uh, one of the best things you can do for your career is uh, get together with some of your peers and uh, challenge one another on the copy that you're reading. Uh, I have a workout group here that I haven't been able to attend quite much in the last uh, several months that I put together with uh, a, a guy here who has a, a studio. And uh, we have a, a number of people that come in every other week. And uh, you bring whatever kind of copy you want. And we have a, a lot of copy there. And you work on something. And we have what I call the three and three. Uh, and I have a couple three and threes, but this is the uh, workout three and three. Uh, you get three reads in the booth. Uh, after your first read, three people can give you uh, notes and suggestions. Uh, the second read, three more people can give you notes and suggestions, and then you get that final read. Not everybody gets there on that third read, but uh, they always get better. And it helps even the people who are giving the uh, the suggestions because we're all in our home studios now. Sure. And we all have to uh, learn to be directors, our own directors, and be able to hear ourselves in a different way than we might have uh, before because – there's nobody there saying, oh, yeah, uh, pick that up, uh, punch that word a little more. Uh, you know, can you make it a little more real? Uh, you're kind of you're kind of reedy in this part. Nobody is there to do that for us but us. And we have to learn how to kind of step out of ourselves, uh, be more objective about who we are and what we are. Also, habits. Um, if you've been doing this for 20 years uh, the style of read that worked 20 years ago is not the style of read that works now on, on almost anything. Right. So you, you, you've got to stay fresh. You need somebody whose uh, ears and uh, comments and heart you trust uh, to share with you their thoughts on your read and suggestions. Um, so I, I, I think it's a great idea. And every early in my career, I had a, a workout group. 
with several voice actors. We would meet every couple of weeks. And everybody in that group went on to have really good careers. Um, And I don't think you could have predicted that just from who they were at the time, except, well, maybe they were the people who would get involved in a group and work hard and so forth. But uh, people who go to workout groups and help one another get better, I think, uh, tend to have better careers. Great advice. Well, and and that also makes me think of something else um, that kind of ties back to something you said earlier. So when you're doing things like three and threes, you're obviously coming up with different, whether intentionally or you're being directed or coming up with different ways of of reading things, of reading the same script. Fast fast forward to doing mm-hmm. auditions and having to self-direct on that. One of the things that you do that not everybody does, uh, you consistently, at least with the, the things that, that I send to you, consistently are always doing two and sometimes three different versions of of a take on the character. How do you determine or how would you suggest to people to determine how many reads you should, how many different reads you should do when it requires, like, let's take a different take on that and and just the mindset that you maybe typically go through to say, all right, I did it that way. Now let's do a second one and do blah. Well, what I, I look at, if you if you've got a character... Uh, and the, you've read the character description, you know who the character is, you know what his motivation, so forth and what that is. Uh, but then you just have a series of lines that may not have stage direction, may not give you an indication of who that character is talking to or um, what the, the the volume might be. I mean, there, there are times uh, that a line or a word could be said a million different ways. The, so what I try to do is uh, say you have a line, uh, and let's just see. I'll p- pull out a line here. just happen to have a script st- sitting up. Uh, over here, I've found him. I mean, that's a typical line from a, sure. a video game. Um, but maybe you don't know how far away is the person you're talking to. How many people are you talking to? Those kinds of things. So I will give you several choices. I will give you a choice, say, just off the top of my head here. Uh, okay, I know this particular game is, is uh, you know, there's a lot of battle and whatnot going on. Uh, so I might say, okay, uh, I'm talking to three people that are within a few feet of me, and I found this person in tall grass. So I don't have to be that loud. Over here, I found him. But maybe that person, uh, the people I'm talking to, are spread out. And there's 30 yards away and 50 yards. Over here, I found him. Or maybe uh, we've been talking and I see the body and I'm really talking to myself. Even though it seems like I'm talking to them, maybe I'm talking to myself because maybe I cared about this person or, or whatever's going on in my mind. And now it's over here. I found him. Each one of those is is different, distinct, and a lot of times what I want the casting director to know is, A, I am directable, so if you tell me, oh, no, you're further away, and B, how give him different emotional levels uh, so they know, wow, he can do a number of things. Uh, sometimes it comes down to, say, it's a little longer piece of copy, a, a paragraph, maybe they haven't been really clear about who this character is or they've given me options like, well, he could well, he could have an American accent, he could have an English accent, he could have a French accent. Well, I'll give him all three. What do you like the most? I can give you that one. Yes, <laughs> it's very good, yeah? Bonjour. I'm so happy to be here with you. And that's what makes Dave Fenoy one of the most uh, sought-after voice actors in, in the country. So that's awesome. I look for Dave all the time. That is awesome. (laughs) Well, thank you. (laughs) People ask all the time, uh, students of mine, do I need to do a lot of character voices? Do I need to have a lot of accents? Do I need to? And I'm like, well, everybody comes to this with something different. I have some friends that can mimic anybody you ever hear. If it's a president, if it's famous actors, whatever it is, they can mimic it. I don't have that talent. Um, 
but I also can't afford to spend my time uh, being concerned that I don't have that talent. I have the talent I have. Uh, I think sometimes voice actors, uh, uh, well, actors in general, people in general, uh, start looking at what other people do that is wonderful and forget about the things they do that are wonderful. Uh, live in the jobs that they didn't get that they wanted to get as opposed to in the jobs that they did get. It's easy to do. Oh, I wanted that role. It would have been perfect for me, and it went to somebody else. I, I had a, um, a wonderful experience just the other day, and it's on Facebook. Um, when The Walking Dead decided to do the character Ezekiel from the, the graphic novel, uh, there had been a bunch of Walking Dead fans of mine from uh, my Lee Everett who knew I had dreadlocks and thought, uh, Dave Fennoy would be perfect to play Ezekiel the King in the TV show. And there was a big uh, Twitter campaign to get me this job, hire Dave Fennoy, hire Dave Fennoy. Well, they finally did give me an audition, uh, and then they gave the job to somebody else. Well, I was you know, a little disappointed. That would have been uh, life-changing in many ways. I, of course, I'd, I'd be spending half my time in Atlanta. Um, <laughs> sure. And But I'm walking down the street, walking my dogs the other day, and I hear this voice, Yo, Dave, walking dead, what's up? And I look around, and it's this good-looking brother uh, sitting with somebody else uh, eating breakfast. And I don't recognize him. And he goes, uh, I'm Ezekiel from the Walking Dead TV show. <laughs> and it's uh, Kari Payton. It's a guy who plays a role. Well, he cut off his dreadlocks, uh, or maybe it was a dreadlock wig. Uh, I didn't recognize him, but it, it was an instant bromance. That is cool. I, I cannot feel bad that this guy got the job. He's killing it. He's, I mean, he's wonderful in the role. Um, and I think sometimes uh, we, we live in the what I didn't get that somebody else got, and now I'm jealous and this and that and the other. Forget about that. Yours is out there. Go get yours. Phenomenal advice. Wow. Dave, we appreciate the time that you spent with us. And uh, any final thoughts for, uh, for, for people uh, working in the voiceover industry? Um, yeah, work. Do the work. Uh, I'll, uh, one of my favorite uh, 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 things I say to, to uh, voice actors, read the phrases, not the words, because that's how we talk. No, that's absolutely true. I think that's super solid advice. Uh, any social media or anything like that that you want to pop on out there? Oh, absolutely. F yeah, follow me at Dave Fennoy on that's Twitter. That's hard to remember. Uh, visit my Facebook page. At Dave Fennoy, yeah, really. <laughs> uh, I'm easy to find on Facebook, Dave Fennoy. Uh, and if you are a voice actor and looking for voice tips and whatnot, I have a free YouTube channel, uh, Dave Fennoy uh, Training, on YouTube. And, uh, of course, uh, if you visit my website, you can click on the, the teaching area there. I do private lessons and I do webinars and and uh, travel around the country doing uh, workshops. And if you happen to be in London, I'm there twice a year, actually, uh, to do my voice acting for video games workshop. So, ta-da! That was awesome, sir. We really, really appreciate it. Buy it, kids. Absolutely. Happy to do it. I am honored uh, to be interviewed and asked Ask what I think. <laughs> that, that is a successful life when people want to ask you advice about stuff. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So that uh, that about wraps this one up. Uh, Dave, thanks again for your time. Randall, BT. Until next time, let's talk voiceover. All right. See you guys. All the best. Ta-da. Our thanks to Dave Fenoy for sharing his time and talent. I hope you found him as awesome as we did. And remember, if you didn't catch part one of our chat with Dave, make sure to listen to episode four. It'll be well worth your time. Let's Talk VoiceOver is hosted by Randy Ryan, owner of Hamsterball Studios, voice music and sound design, and Brian Talbot, actor and all-around creative guy. If you have comments, questions, ideas for other show topics that you'd be interested in hearing about, or you just want to let us know what you think, you can reach us by sending an email to bt at letstalkvoiceover.com or go to our website at www.letstalkvoiceover.com. 
That's Let's Talk VoiceOver.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite media app so you don't miss an episode. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter, too. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk VoiceOver. We'll talk again real soon.